August in Hip Hop August 16, 1964, Charlie Baltimore's birth Charlie Baltimore was discovered by the notorious B.I.G. in the summer of 1995, and they reportedly entered a romantic relationship shortly after. She made her debut as Faith Evans, Biggie's wife, in Junior Mafia's Get Money music video. Guided by Biggie, Charlie signed with Undia's recordings. Led by producer Lance on Rivera. Under Undia's, she recorded an album titled Cold as Ice, but it remained unreleased due to label issues. In 2002, she left Undia's and joined Irv Gotti's Murder Incorporated Records. During her time there, her single diary earned her a Grammy nomination for Best Female Rap Solo Performance in 2003. 1994, Organized Confusion's album Stress, The Extinction Agenda. Following their successful self-titled debut album, hip-hop duo Organized Confusion, Prince Poe and Pharaoh Monch, released their second album, Stress, The Extinction Agenda, on August 16, 1994. This LP is celebrated as a hip-hop classic, acclaimed by both rap enthusiasts and critics. The album features guest appearances from OC and Q-Tip. With production contributions from Rockwilder and Buckwild. The lead single, Stress, expresses the duo's frustration with racism in New York. 1997, Bone Thugs and Harmony's number one album. On August 16, 1997, hip-hop group Bone Thugs and Harmony achieved a number one ranking in the US with their third studio album. The Art of War. 1999 Tricky's collaborative album Juxtapose. On this date in 1999, trip hop artist Tricky released Juxtapose, a collaborative project with DJ Muggs and Dame Grease. Tricky's distinctive monotone rapping style merges with Muggs and Grease's beats, creating a murky atmosphere. Tricky's public image as a misunderstood figure was partly influenced by media portrayal. 2000, Eminem's divorce from Kimberly Mathers. After a tumultuous relationship that inspired Eminem's music, he filed for divorce. From Kimberly Mathers on this day in 2000. Their high school sweetheart romance led to marriage in 1999. The divorce followed Kim's suicide attempt and Eminem's arrest for an assault incident related to their marital issues. 2005, Proz releases Win Lose or Draw. Proz, a former Fuji's member, released Win Lose or Draw on this day in 2005. The sole single from the album was Haven't Found, a reimagining of U2's hit I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. Despite the involvement of notable artists, the album performed poorly in terms of sales. Birth of a Hip-Hop Innovator Born on this day in 1969 in New York City. Kelvin Mercer, a founding member of the hip-hop trio. De La Soul, is also known professionally as Postanus or Pos. Debut Impact in 1993, rap trailblazers 8Ball and MJG, originating from Memphis, Tennessee, unveiled their inaugural album. Coming Out Hard. Guided under the mentorship of Suave House Records CEO Tony Draper. The album's title track ingeniously sampled Holding Back the Years by Simply Red and Stay by Rufus and Shaka Khan. This composition swiftly ascended as a Southern classic and subsequently found itself reimagined by artists like 3-6 Mafia and Field Mob. Empowering Everyday Women. 1993 Xscape embodies the spirit of everyday women with just kicking it. The 1990s witnessed a surge in girl groups, becoming a defining aspect of the era. Among these influential acts such as TLC, SWV, and En Vogue, Xscape emerged as a prominent force, contributing to the evolution of R&B during this period. Spearheaded by Jermaine Dupri, who had previously worked with TLC, Xscape's discovery took place while he sought to establish a female group for his so-so deaf label. The quartet, composed of Candy Burris, Tamika Tiny Cottle, and sisters Latasha and Tamika Scott, was unearthed at his 19th birthday celebration in 1992. Farewell to a hip-hop era. On this date in 1995, the legendary show Yo! MTV Raps culminated its seven-year broadcast an instrumental platform in propagating hip-hop culture across global television screens, the show's influence was undeniable. Yet, as hip-hop permeated mainstream media, the show's relevance dwindled, culminating in its eventual cessation. Triumphant Top Spot In 1996, the illustrious hip-hop ensemble A Tribe Called Quest etched their names in history by securing the coveted number one position on the US Billboard chart. With their fourth studio opus, Beats, Rhymes, and Life, Ludicrous Unveiling 
Ludacris etched his name in the annals of music in 1999 with the release of his inaugural album Incog. Disseminated through his independent label DTP Entertainment, the album featured notable collaborations and included the infectious club anthem What's Your Fantasy, a catalyst propelling Ludacris into the limelight, and eventually catapulting him into a major label deal with Def Jam Recordings. Empowering Artistry Concurrently, 1999 marked the year when Mary J. Blige seized the reins of her career with the unveiling of her eponymous fourth album, Mary. This album denoted a pivotal juncture as Blige embarked on her artistic voyage independent of prior guidance. Bolstered by accomplished producers, the album showcased a polished R&B soundscape exploring the intricate dimensions of love. Mob Deep's Unveiling The same year witnessed the release of Mob Deep's fourth opus, Murder Music, after enduring several setbacks. The album's crowning jewel, Quiet Storm, featuring Lil' Kim, emerged as a timeless classic within Mob Deep's repertoire. Initially intended for Prodigy's solo project, the song's resonance on mixtapes propelled its inclusion in murder music. A chart-topping dilemma. Shifting to 2002, Nelly and Kelly Rowland inaugurated a seven-week reign atop the US Billboard Hot 100 chart with their infectious hit dilemma. Captivating collaborations. In 2017, the melodic creation feels by DJ Calvin Harris, featuring Pharrell Williams, Katy Perry, and Big Sean, commandeered the numero uno spot on the UK singles chart. Drake's chart triumph. Fast forwarding to 2019, Canadian rap luminary Drake achieved Zenith success with his debut compilation offering Care Package, securing the topmost position on the prestigious US Billboard 200 chart. From House of Pain to Hip Hop Fame. In 1969, Long Island, New York welcomed the birth of Eric Francis Schrode. Also recognized as Everlast. Rising to prominence as the charismatic frontman of the hip-hop ensemble House of Pain, Everlast left an indelible mark on the genre. The Wu-Tang Clan's enigmatic wordsmith. The same year saw the birth of Master Killa, a Wu-Tang Clan luminary who paralleled a ninja within the group. His unexpected appearances on both group and solo records unveiled his exceptional prowess. While his role was modest on the clan's debut under the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers, he seized a more prominent role on the subsequent double album Wu-Tang Forever. Clips's Rhyming Visionary Shifting to 1972, No Malice emerged, forming one half of the Clips duo affiliated with the Neptunes. Alongside his brother Pusha T. No Malice contributed to four Clips albums and achieved two solo projects. Their debut Lord Willen showcased Pharrell's innovative beats, notably on the hit single Grindin'. Phoenix rising to platinum glory. In 1998, The Temptations engineered a triumphant comeback with Phoenix rising, breaking a two-decade hiatus from significant hits. With the guidance of Narda Michael Walden, the album yielded platinum success, propelled by tracks like Stay, echoing the spirit of their timeless classic My Girl. Quick release amidst legal turmoil. Also in 1998, reggae luminary Buju Banton faced a challenging juncture as he released Quick, a resequenced version of his 1992 debut Stamina Daddy. His meteoric rise in the 90s reggae and dancehall scene was disrupted by legal entanglements. That led to his incarceration. 21 seconds to UK dominance. The year 2001 witnessed the triumph of the garage and hip-hop collective So Solid Crew as they claimed their first UK number one single with the infectious hit 21 Seconds. From Rehab to Resilience A significant turning point unfolded in 2005 when Eminem confronted his sleep medication dependency and sought rehabilitation. His close call with death, stemming from a perilous mix of pills, marked a pivotal moment. Although his journey towards recovery saw several setbacks, Eminem's resilience prevailed. Finding Forever atop the Billboard 200. In 2007, rapper Rashid Lin, known as Common, achieved the pinnacle of success with his seventh studio album Finding Forever. Securing the top spot on the US Billboard 200 chart. Imperial Blaze and Dancehall Grooves. Stepping into 2009, Sean Paul's album Imperial Blaze aimed to address social issues, yet it was the irresistible dancehall vibes of tracks like So Fine that captivated audiences and dominated the scene. God forgives, I don't claims number one. 2012 marked a milestone for rapper Rick Ross, as his fifth studio release God forgives, I don't soared to the number one spot on the US charts, solidifying his influence. Reigning supreme in the charts. 
The year 2018 witnessed rapper Travis Scott's album Astro World claiming the top spot on the United States charts, a two-week reign that showcased his musical prowess and captivated audiences. Today, we dive into key moments in hip-hop culture, from breakthrough artists to iconic releases. Let's go through decades that have shaped the rhythm of history. Birth of American rapper Nate Dogg In 1969, Nathaniel Dwayne Hale, professionally known as Nate Dogg, was born in Long Beach, California. Nate Dogg was a highly influential and talented American singer, rapper, and songwriter known for his smooth and distinctive voice that contributed to shaping the G-Funk and West Coast hip-hop sound. Curtis Blow's Historic Gold Certification for the Breaks In 1980, Curtis Blow achieved a historic feat as the first hip-hop artist to receive a gold certification from the RIAA for his single The Breaks, selling over 500,000 copies. The song secured the number 4 spot on the Billboard R&B chart. Birth of Lil Romeo, Son of Master P In 1989, American rapper Percy Romeo Miller, also recognized as Lil Romeo, was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. He's the son of rapper and record label founder Master P. Master P, also known as Percy Miller, is a multi-talented entrepreneur, rapper, and record executive who founded No Limit Records and played a significant role in the growth of Southern hip-hop. The Neptunes Release Clones Album Moving to 2003, the renowned production duo Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo, known as The Neptunes, transitioned to releasing music under their own names. Their album The Neptunes Present Clones featured a star-studded lineup including Jay-Z, Snoop Dogg, Busta Rhymes, and Clips. The breakout hit from this album was Pharrell's collaboration with Jay-Z, Frontin', which ascended to the top of the Billboard Hot R&B slash Hip Hop Songs chart and reached number 5 on the Hot 100 Singles chart. 2003, Jules Santana's solo debut with From Me To You. Also in 2003, Jules Santana embarked on his solo journey with the album From Me To You. While Cameron remained a notable Diplomat star, Jules Santana's solo debut peaked at number 8 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. The single dipset, Santana's Town, featuring Cameron, garnered a Grammy nomination for Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group. T.I. Introduces Trap Music The year 2003 marked the birth of Trap Music, an album by T.I. This pivotal album solidified T.I.'s prominence, aided by his label switch to Atlantic and the establishment of Grand Hustle Records. T.I. claimed credit for coining the term trap music, suggesting he pioneered a new subgenre. Bow Wow's Transition on Unleashed In the same year, Bow Wow's album Unleashed saw the artist, who was then 16 years old, shedding the lil from his name. This transition coincided with a shift in lyrical themes, as Bow Wow delved into a broader range of real-life subjects beyond romantic relationships. Jizz's Pro Tools album release Fast forward to 2008, Jizza released Pro Tools, a reference to the software employed in creating the album. Jizza's return after six years was marked by this release. The people at my label Baby Grand were asking for a name, he said. I was looking around the house, or the studio, and trying to come up with something, and I may even have been reading the actual Pro Tools manual and just went with that, and it works great with the album. Ice Cube's powerful raw footage album. In the same year, Ice Cube's album Raw Footage emerged against the backdrop of a struggling American economy and a presidential election. The album showcased Ice Cube's angriest and most politically charged work in years, reflecting on societal issues and attributing blame. They want to blame the world's problems on gangster rap, he said on, thank God. The record featured verses by The Game, Young Jeezy, and Music Soul Child. Swayze's self-titled debut album and MTV show. Debuting in 2008, Aaron Swayze Smith's self-titled album coincided with an MTV reality show named Buzzin', echoing the album's first single. The show tracked Swayze and Cisco Adler in the lead-up to the album's release. While Buzzin' reached number 46 on the Hot 100, its successor Corona and Lime peaked at number 23. KRS-One is born. The Teacha is celebrating his 58th birthday today. Lawrence Parker, best known as Chris, was born in the Bronx. There, he adopted his MC name, which stands for Knowledge Reigns Supreme over nearly everyone, and developed his educational flow. Big Mo is born. 
Big Mo was a Houston-based rapper known for his distinctive chopped and screwed style and contributions to the southern hip-hop scene before his untimely death in 2007. Prince releases the Graffiti Bridge soundtrack. Prince's 12th studio album doubles as the soundtrack for the 1990 film Graffiti Bridge and featured guest cameos from Mavis Staples, The Time, Tevin Campbell, who sang the notable single Round and Round, and George Clinton. Clips show fans around Virginia with Lord Willen. The debut album from Clips, the brotherly rap duo from Virginia, Pusha T and No Malice, formerly known as Malice, was produced by the Neptunes and took off on the strength of the addictive single and top 40 hit Grindin'. And with Lord Willen came a new standard for rapping about the street drug game with unflinching pens. Angie Martinez releases Animal House. New York radio DJ Angie Martinez flirted with a side career as a rapper for two albums. Animal House was the voice of New York's second and most popular, hitting number 11 on the Billboard 200 and racking up platinum sales. For the catchy Fabulous and Sicario single If I Could Go. Dr. Dre hits the top. In 2015 producer Drive Dre hit number 1 in the UK with his third studio album Compton. The album topped the charts in Australia, Belgium, Canada, the Netherlands, France, Ireland, New Zealand, and Switzerland as well that year. DJ Khaled on Billboard. 2016, with his ninth studio album Major Key, DJ Khaled topped the US Billboard 200 chart. The album features a dozen guest appearances, including the likes of J. Cole, Jay-Z, Kendrick Lamar, Nas, Drake, and Lil Wayne among others. 1968, the birth of rapper and producer Randy Stretch Walker, a vital member of Hollis, Queen's Live Squad. Renowned for his production work for Tupac. The Notorious B.I.G. And Nas. He was tragically killed in a high-speed car chase on November 30, 1995, just about one year and five minutes apart from Tupac Shakur's pivotal shooting at Quad Studios, as reported by Lt. Vito Arspano of the NYPD. Kelise Rogers, named after her parents Kenneth and Evelis, was born. Raised in the Frederick Douglass houses in Harlem, she displayed her musical talents through church singing and playing various instruments. In 1992 Short released Short Dogs in the House, his sixth album, which reached the top 20 of the Billboard 200 and number 3 on the top R&B slash hip-hop albums chart. The album featured a remake of Donny Hathaway's classic The Ghetto and the MC Hammer dissing track. Short but funky, with a significant influence of funk, particularly George Clinton's P-Funk. In 2001 Jay-Z unveiled his O, H-O-V-A, a standout single from his classic album The Blueprint. The song heavily sampled Jackson 5's I Want You Back and Dr. Dre's explosive beat. Contributing to its success and solidifying a mentor relationship between Jay-Z and producer Kanye West. In 2001 3 Six Mafia released Choices, the album, a soundtrack to their independent movie of the same name. Depicting the choices and penitentiary chances of a Memphis ex-con. The album featured collaborations with crew members like DJ Paul, Juicy J, and guest artist Ludacris. In 2001 Juvenile's album Project English provided an ironic twist as it led to his departure from Cash Money Records. Despite achieving number 2 on the Billboard 200 and featuring collaborations with Cash Money artists Lil Wayne, BG, and Big Timers. On August 21, hip-hop group Terror Squad achieved the pinnacle of the US Billboard Hot 100 chart with their hit single Lean Back. In 2007 Rihanna released Hate That I Love You, a platinum certified ballad from her album. Good Girl Gone Bad, co-written and produced by Norwegian beatmakers Stargate and Neo. In 2008 MIA dropped Kala, her second album, recorded across the world due to US homeland security concerns. Despite challenges, the album reached number 18 on the Billboard 200, fueled by the enduring single Paper Planes. Swizz Beats showcased his solo talents with One Man Band Man, featuring guest appearances by notable artists. The album achieved number 1 on the top R&B slash hip-hop albums chart and debuted at number 7 on the Billboard 200. In 2007 Talib Kweli released Eardrum, his first album under Blacksmith Records and distributed by Warner Brothers. The album boasted a diverse lineup of guest collaborators, including UGK, Will I Am, KRS-One, and more. Eminem's seventh studio release Recovery topped the UK albums chart earning nominations for three Grammy Awards and achieving number one status in 17 countries. 
In 2010 the UK singles chart witnessed American rapper Flo Rida and French producer David Gaeta's collaboration. With their single club Can't Handle Me reigning at the top. On this day in 1966, Gary Grice, known by the stage names Jizza and Genius, is born in Brooklyn. As a veteran rapper and a founding member of the Wu-Tang Clan, Jizza is often considered the intellectual force behind the group. His album Liquid Swords, released in 1995, is celebrated as a classic showcasing his exceptional lyrical skill. A study in 2017 found that Jizza possesses the second largest vocabulary in popular rap music. Living Single debuts on Fox as a groundbreaking sitcom. The show portrays the lives of six lifelong friends living in a Brooklyn brownstone, navigating love, friendship, and work in the big city. It stands out as one of the few shows of its time that authentically represents black experiences, resonating with black viewers. Created and produced by Yvette Lee Bowser, the show runs for five seasons until January 1998. Aaliyah releases the tender ballad, At Your Best, You Are Love as part of her 1994 debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. This song, originally by the Isley Brothers, is a cover that showcases Aaliyah's affectionate portrayal of a lover who has captured her heart. Over time, Aaliyah's version becomes a source of inspiration for various artists, leading to samples and reinterpretations. Rapper Snoop Dogg achieves his third consecutive number one album in the US with The Game Is To Be Sold, Not To Be Told. The album was released under No Limit Records, Master P's record label, during Snoop Dogg's time with the label. Big Pun, known for his debut album Capital Punishment, releases You Came Up featuring Noriega. This track, following the success of Still Not A Player, gains significant airplay on urban radio. KRS-One releases the Greatest Hits album A Retrospective, dedicated to his mentor Scott Law Rock, who founded Boogie Down Productions. The album includes songs from Boogie Down Productions and highlights from KRS-One's career. Buju Banton's sixth album Unchained Spirit is released on Anti, an imprint of Epitaph Records. Known for his incorporation of a spiritual message in his music, Banton delivers 16 songs on the album, featuring collaborations with artists like Barris Hammond, Luciano, and Wayne Wonder. Lil Zane releases his debut album Young World, The Future, which includes the hit single Call On Me featuring 112. The song tops the Billboard Hot Rap Songs chart for five weeks, while the album garners substantial sales. Outcast, after the success of Speakerbox slash The Love Below, shifts their musical direction with the film Idol Wild and its accompanying soundtrack. The movie is set in the 1930s Deep South during the Prohibition era, featuring Big Boy and Andre 3000 as childhood friends navigating music in danger. The all-girl group Danity Kane releases their self-titled debut album and the single Showstopper. Formed under Diddy's guidance during MTV's reality series Making the Band, the album debuts at number one on the Billboard 200 chart. A posthumous album titled The Shining is released, showcasing music by Jay Dilla, who passed away a few months earlier. The album is completed with the assistance of fellow artist Kareem Riggins. Kelis releases her fourth album Kelis Was Here, featuring production from notable producers. The lead single Bossy asserts Kelis as a trendsetter and a confident presence in the music industry. Lazy Bone releases his third album The New Revolution, characterized by his street-focused lyrics over G-Funk style beats. His longevity in the rap game is attributed to the support of his fans. The Black Eyed Peas achieved the number one spot on the UK singles chart with the hit song I Got A Feeling, which enjoys immense popularity worldwide, topping 28 singles charts. Turning back the clock to 1971, we commemorate the birth of Wayne Hardnett Jr., an artist better known by his stage name Bone Crusher. Hailing from Atlanta, Bone Crusher etched his name into the cultural lexicon with his iconic single Never Scared. This chart-topping hit ascended to number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100 and a solid number 6 on the rap chart. However, Bone Crusher's journey into the music realm commenced in the late 80s as a DJ before his involvement with the group Lyrical Giants. Following a series of setbacks that included unsuccessful record deals, Bone Crusher ultimately secured a solo contract under the aegis of Jermaine Dupri's prestigious So So Def Records. His debut album Atten Chun further solidified his presence, reaching an impressive number 6 position on the Billboard 200 chart. Fast forwarding to 1994, the legendary group Public Enemy graced the scene with their fifth studio album titled Muse Sick An Hour Mess Age. 
In a time when the hip-hop landscape was dominated by the gangster rap trend, Public Enemy stood out by defying conformity. Despite facing a barrage of mixed reviews and distribution hurdles, the album managed to capture the number 14 spot on the Billboard 200 chart. The year 1997 witnessed the resurgence of Puff Daddy and the family's album No Way Out to the number one position on the US album's chart. Beyond the American borders, this album reigned supreme in Austria, Canada, Switzerland, and the UK. A true testament to Puff Daddy's international influence and musical prowess. Skipping ahead to 2005, Jim Jones unveiled his album Harlem, Diary of a Summer. This release marked a watershed moment for Jones, achieving his highest album debut. Notably, the album showcased the emergence of Max B, who contributed significantly to the project's success. The same year witnessed the release of Corrupt's fourth studio album, Against the Grain. Marking his debut as a solo artist under Death Row Records, the album's launch should have been a crowning achievement. Yet, tensions between Death Row and distributor Koch Records cast a shadow over its success, leading to Corrupt and Death Row urging fans to boycott the album due to alterations made by Koch. In 2005 came the release of Pumpkinhead's second album. This New York battle rapper's album featured collaborations with notable artists like Immortal Technique, Jean Grey, and others. Sadly, Pumpkinhead's journey was cut short when he passed away in June 2015, leaving a void in the hip-hop community. The year was 1991 when Naughty by Nature unleashed OPP upon the world. Serving as the lead single from their self-titled album under Tommy Boy Records, the song swiftly ascended to number 6 on the illustrious Billboard Hot 100. This infectious track not only solidified Naughty by Nature's place in hip-hop but also became a defining anthem of the era. Venturing forth to 1994, we encounter Tupac Shakur in the midst of his artistic brilliance. Pour Out a Little Liquor emerged as a poignant prelude to Thug Life's debut album, Thug Life, Volume 1. In a curious twist of fate, this release not only marked Thug Life's introduction but also served as their swan song. Tupac's magnetic presence, both as a solo artist and part of Thug Life, showcased his lyrical prowess and unyielding impact. The year 1999 bore witness to the transformation of Sean Combs into Puff Daddy, and his sophomore album Forever exemplified his evolution. Amid the backdrop of Combs' much publicized legal entanglements, the album managed to claim a noteworthy number two spot on the Billboard 200. Despite the critical discourse surrounding the album's heavy sampling, its platinum sales certification underscored Combs' unwavering influence in the industry. Parallel to these events, Old Dirty Bastard emerged with Got Your Money in 1999, a track that exuded his distinctive style and charisma. This magnetic release, featured on his album End Please, became one of ODB's final top 10 hits before his untimely departure, serving as a testament to his enduring legacy. Advancing into the year 2004, we encountered the burgeoning talent of Jim Jones with his debut studio album On My Way to Church. Not only did this album establish Jones as a formidable artist, but it also highlighted his prowess as a record executive. The album's debut on the Billboard 200 illuminated Jones's trajectory, both as a creative force and an influential figure in the hip-hop realm. Simultaneously, the foreign exchange brought a unique transcontinental collaboration to the forefront with their album Connected. The brainchild of rapper Fonny from Little Brother and Dutch producer Nicolay, this album defied geographic barriers, reflecting their innovative production process. Nicolay would produce a beat in the Netherlands and send the beat to Fonny through instant messaging, email, and traditional mail to lay down the vocals. Fonty would return the product, so Nicolay could then master the track, they did not meet until after the album was completed. In the same year, Young Buck unveiled Straight Outta Cashville, a nod to NWA's iconic Straight Outta Compton, set against the backdrop of Nashville. The album's collaborative efforts and diverse production showcased Young Buck's dynamism, contributing to the dynamic tapestry of the rap genre. 2004 also witnessed Mace's triumphant return with Welcome Back. This single, marking Mace's re-entry after a hiatus, heralded his enduring presence in the industry. A poignant reminder of Mace's musical journey, the track demonstrated the lasting impact of an artist's legacy. In 1963, the world witnessed the birth of Gregory Jacobs, who would go on to become the legendary Shock G. Hailing from New York, Shock G's artistic journey took a momentous turn when he relocated to Oakland in 1987. It was here that he planted the seeds of Digital Underground, 
a pioneering hip-hop group that soared to fame with the infectious rhythms of the Humpty Dance in 1990. Beyond their musical contributions, Digital Underground served as a launching pad for the iconic Tupac Shakur. Dwight Conroy Farrell, known under the moniker Count Base D, graced the world on August 25, 1973. Hailing from Milheim, Pennsylvania, Count Base D is an artist of multifaceted talents, encompassing rapping, record production, and multi-instrumental prowess. His signature production style is an intricate fusion of short MPC samples, film excerpts, live instrumentation, and idiosyncratic lyrics, culminating in a truly distinctive sonic experience that defies conventional boundaries. Tragedy cast a shadow on August 25, 1993, as Philip Waldemarium's life was cut short in a confrontation involving Snoop Dogg. This incident marked a pivotal moment that could have potentially halted Snoop Dogg's nascent career. In 1998 Lauren Hill's departure from the Fugees gave birth to The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, a transcendent work that defied genre boundaries. Marrying hip-hop with an old-school sensibility, the album captured hearts and minds alike, reigning atop the Billboard 200 and amassing an impressive 10 Grammy Award nominations. Of those nominations, five were triumphantly secured, including the coveted Album of the Year and Best Female R&B Vocal Performance for the iconic doo-wop, That Thing. 1998 was also the year that witnessed Exhibit's influential presence with 40 Days and 40 Nights. This album marked a pivotal chapter in Exhibit's journey. Heralding the strength of its debut single, What You See Is What You Get. This track resonated deeply with audiences, propelling it to number 3 on the rap chart and number 50 on the Hot 100. Simultaneously, another artist star was on the rise in 1998 as Nicole Ray stepped into the spotlight with Make It Hot. Emerging from her debut appearance on Missy Elliott's Super Dupa Fly, Nicole Ray's solo debut bore the unmistakable imprint of Elliott's creative guidance. The title track, produced by Timbaland, catapulted Ray into the limelight, peaking at number 5 on the Hot 100. 1998 introduced the world to the dynamic duo of Most Def and Talib Kweli through the album Black Star. In an era dominated by gangster rap, their socially conscious lyrics offered a poignant counterpoint, echoing the themes of conscious hip-hop. Most Def and Talib Kweli are Black Star became a rallying cry for those seeking thought-provoking narratives amidst the sonic landscape. Fast forward to 2006, and the fusion of music and cinema took center stage with Outkast's release of their full-length feature film, Idle Wild. The parallel to their real-life trajectory added depth to the narrative, mirroring their journey of individual growth while maintaining their collective identity as Outkast. In 2007, rapper Kanye West's ascent to the pinnacle of the UK singles chart was solidified by the Grammy award-winning anthem Stronger. This soaring track not only captured the hearts of listeners but also ascended to the coveted number one position, asserting West's influence and musical prowess on an international stage. Meanwhile, the same year witnessed the hip-hop duo UGK achieving a monumental triumph as they ascended to the zenith of the US Billboard 200 chart. Their fifth studio album, Underground Kings, stood as a testament to their artistry, carving out a path to the apex of the music scene and etching their names as true musical royalty. In 2012, rapper Flo Rida seized the spotlight on August 25, interrupting Carly Rae Jepsen's nine-week reign at number one on the US singles chart with the magnetic hit whistle. This international sensation resonated far beyond borders, reigning supreme atop the charts in over 20 countries worldwide, a testament to its universal appeal and infectious rhythm. Born on this day in 1986 in the heart of Brooklyn, New York, Carlos St. John Phillips, better known by his stage name St. J.H.N., emerged as a dynamic rapper and singer. His chart-topping single Roses resonates as a testament to his musical prowess, solidifying his place in the contemporary hip-hop landscape. In 1997, Compton's own Coolio unveiled his third album, My Soul. The album's lead single, See You When You Get There, soared to number 12 on the Hot 100, achieving international acclaim. My Soul made it to number 39 on the Billboard 200 and number 49 on the top R&B slash hip-hop albums. While the album marked his farewell to Tommy Boy, it stood as a testament to his artistry. With production contributions from talents like Romeo, Vic C, Brian Wino Dobbs, and DJ Iraq. The turn of the millennium witnessed rapper Nelly's meteoric rise as his debut studio album, Country Grammar, embarked on a remarkable five-week reign atop the US charts. This milestone solidified Nelly's status as a hip-hop juggernaut. According to Billboard, as of 2022, 
Country Grammar is one of the 15 best performing 21st century albums. Without any of its singles being number one hits on the Billboard Hot 100. In 2001, Petey Pablo etched North Carolina onto the hip hop map with his debut single, Raise Up. Crafted in collaboration with the legendary Timbaland. The track reached number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100, encapsulating the essence of a summertime anthem. The year 2003 saw the emergence of Young Bloods, releasing their sophomore album Drank and Putnas. This Atlanta crunk infused project, highlighted by the Grammy nominated single Damn, soared to number 5 on the Billboard 200, eventually attaining platinum status. Also in 2003, the Southern rap collective Nappy Roots dropped their second album, Wooden Leather. Featuring collaborations with luminaries like Kanye West, Lil Jon, and David Banner, the album soared to number 12 on the Billboard 200, solidifying their place in the hip-hop landscape. 2006 saw American rapper Rick Ross ascend to the zenith of the Billboard 200 chart with his debut studio album, Port of Miami, marking a triumphant entry into the rap scene. The year 2008 witnessed the game's unveiling of his third album, LAX featuring an array of guest appearances and chart-topping singles. The album resonated with listeners and critics alike, climbing to number two on the Billboard 200 and reigning supreme on the top R&B slash hip-hop albums and top rap albums charts. In the same year, Atlanta rapper V.I.C. introduced his debut album, Beast, which reached number seven on the top rap albums chart. Meanwhile, fellow Atlanta natives Yin Yang twins dropped their mixtape The Official Work, making waves on the top rap albums chart. In 1975, the illustrious Mason Durrell Betha, better known as Mace, was born alongside his twin sister, Stassen. Originating from a family of six children, Mace would later establish himself as a prominent Harlem rapper. His cameo appearances on chart-topping tracks like Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, Honey, and Mo Money, Mo Problems propelled him into the spotlight before his 1997 debut album. The acclaimed Harlem World album made an impactful entry onto the scene, soaring to number one on the Billboard 200 and earning Grammy nominations. With time, this seminal album achieved quadruple platinum status, boasting sales exceeding 4 million copies. The year 1991 witnessed the release of Biz Markie's third studio album, I Need a Haircut. The 12th track, Alone Again, reshaped the hip-hop industry's landscape when songwriter Gilbert O'Sullivan and Warner Brothers Records sued Biz and his label for copyright infringement. In 1996, the legendary rap duo OutKast released their second album, A.T. Leans. A mere blip after their appearance on Martin, the album gracefully debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 and achieved double platinum certification. Boasting a self-produced majority, A.T. Leans captured the essence of originality and creativity, embodying the spirit of true artistry. MC Light, a pioneering figure in female hip-hop, etched her name into history in 1996 by unveiling her fifth album, Bad As I Wanna Be. A collaboration with producer Jermaine Dupri yielded hit tracks like Keep On, Keep It On featuring Xscape and Cold Rock A Party featuring Missy Elliott. Jay-Z and Mary J. Blige further enriched the hip-hop landscape in 1996 with the release of Can't Knock the Hustle. Emerging from Jay-Z's debut album Reasonable Doubt, the track's raw beats, produced by Nobody in His Mother's Kitchen, harmonized perfectly with its poignant lyrics about drug dealing and street life. Mary J. Blige's resonant chorus, inspired by Melissa Morgan's 1985 hit Fool's Paradise, infused the song with authenticity, delivering a message of survival and respect for diverse hustles. Born on this day in 1999, American rapper and singer Redarius Green, known as Rod Wave, hails from St. Petersburg, Florida. Signed to Alamo Records, he stands out for his robust voice and unique fusion of hip-hop and R&B elements, solidifying his place as a trailblazer of the soul trap movement. The year 2002 saw a slew of significant releases. Trina's sophomore album, Diamond Princess, stormed into the scene, securing its spot at number 14 on the Billboard 200 and number 5 on the R&B slash hip-hop charts. In a parallel triumph, rapper Eve embarked on an evolution journey, defying competition and achieving international acclaim with platinum-certified hits like Gangsta Lovin'. KRS-One left his indelible mark on the year with the mixtape, a precursor to the subsequent release of the Chris Styles album. The legacy of NWA continued in 2002 with the release of the NWA Legacy, Volume 2, 
a compilation featuring tracks from original members and other Ruthless Records artists. Meanwhile, Dev and the Dudes just try and ta live album, characterized by its underground appeal and collaborations with artists like Nas and Exhibit, contributed to the evolving hip-hop landscape. Houston's Lil Flip cemented his presence with his major label debut, Underground Legend, in 2002. The album marked its territory by debuting at number 12 on the Billboard 200 and boasting the hit single The Way We Ball, eventually attaining platinum certification in December of the same year. Lastly, in 2011, a collaborative masterpiece emerged as rappers Jay-Z and Kanye West's album Watch the Throne ascended to the summit of the US Billboard 200 chart. In the year 2001, Mary J. Blige laid bare her personal struggles in her album No More Drama. As an artist known for channeling her pain into her music, Blige was grappling with addiction to alcohol and cocaine while facing the scars of abusive relationships. The title track, No More Drama, becomes a poignant reflection of her tumultuous upbringing in the projects, where violence, hardship, and cycles of pain were inescapable. Singing this song transports her back to a time of childhood adversity, of stolen trick-or-treat bags and the haunting presence of domestic violence. The album, however, isn't solely about sorrow, it's a blend of dark and light. The collaborative effort of renowned producers such as Swizz Beats, Missy Elliott, Neptunes, and Dr. Dre infuses the album with sonic variety. Dr. Dre's production shines particularly in the hit track Family Affair, a vibrant fusion of deep funk, bass, strings, and uplifting energy. Tech 9 the horrorcore rapper, unveiled his album Angelic in the same year. This album serves as a platform for Tech 9s inner turmoil, exploring themes of spiritual torment and soul sickness. Lines about drugs, sex, religion, fame, and even suicide paint a portrait of his darker psyche. He addresses his own struggles and offers a glimpse into the complexities of his mind. RZA, a core member of the Wu-Tang Clan, took on a new persona as Bobby Digital in 2001 with his album Digital Bullet. Amidst the Wu-Tang Clan's internal challenges, Riz's alter ego became a conduit for his creative exploration. Through tracks like Glocko Pop, Brooklyn Babies, and Bong Bong, Riza crafts a narrative of the digital pimp's world, delivering a captivating solo effort that captures the essence of his innovative artistry. Crazy Bone, a member of Bone Thugs and Harmony, made his mark with the release of Thug on the Line in 2001. The album showcased Crazy Bone's distinct style, drawing praise from critics for his composed delivery. A standout feature of the album is a rare appearance by Sade, adding a unique touch to the hip-hop landscape. Moving forward to 2007, Noriega, born Victor Santiago, returned with his fifth solo album titled Noriality. This release marked his comeback after his 2004 reggaeton project. Collaborations with notable artists such as Jadakiss, Corrupt, Capone, and Kanye West enriched the album's diversity and received positive reception both critically and commercially. Following the success of Notorious B.I.G.'s acclaimed album Ready to Die in 1994, he formed a rap collective named Junior Mafia, which stands for Junior Masters at Finding Intelligent Attitudes. Comprising members like Lil Cease, Trife, Larceny, Cheek Del Velk, Kleptomaniac, and Lil Kim as the sole female rapper. The group released their debut album Conspiracy on Undia's Entertainment. The album achieved gold status in the US, largely due to the hit single player's anthem. This release also marked the beginning of solo careers for Lil' Kim and Lil' Cease. While incarcerated at New York's Clinton Correctional Facility for Sexual Assault, Tupac Shakur released his influential album Me Against the World. One of the tracks, Temptations, showcased his seductive style. The music video for the song, directed by Dave Nelson, featured appearances from celebrities like Coolio, Ice-T, Jada Pinkett Smith, Treach, Salt and Pepper, Bill Bellamy, and others. Despite Tupac's absence, Nelson creatively crafted the video. DJ Clue? Gained prominence in the 90s for his popular mixtapes. In 2000, he curated a mixtape-like soundtrack for the documentary Backstage, which highlighted the chaos of the Hard Knock Life tour featuring artists like Jay-Z, DMX, Redman and Method Man, and Ja Rule. Daz Dillinger, known for his contributions to West Coast hip-hop through Death Row Records, transitioned to being an independent artist. After his departure from Death Row, he founded his label DPG Records and released albums like Retaliation, Revenge and Get Back in 1998. His 2000 album R.A.W. delved into his experiences growing up in Long Beach, California, addressing topics such as gang life and deceitful relationships. 
In 2006, after fulfilling their contract with Geffen Records, The Roots faced a pivotal decision, sign with another label or focus on touring. They eventually signed with Def Jam, despite not fitting the typical Def Jam sound. Jay-Z, the label's CEO and a friend of the band, championed their signing, even though he had reservations initially. Cuban-American rapper and songwriter Mello Man Ace introduced his debut album, Escape from Havana, and achieved notable success with the Spanglish track Menorosa. Despite his later involvement as a founding member of the California rap group Cypress Hill, alongside his brother Sen Dog, Ace embarked on a solo path in 1988, releasing his breakthrough album a year later. This effort was followed by Brother with Two Tongues in 1992. Although Ace's presence in the music scene became sporadic over the next two decades, with occasional album releases and contributions to movies and soundtracks, Mena Rosa, produced by Tony G, remains his most significant hit, recognized for bridging the Latino community with hip-hop. Featuring Puff Daddy and Mace, rapper The Notorious B.I.G. secured a two-week chart-topping position in the U.S. with Mo Money Mo Problems in 1997. Released posthumously following Biggie's tragic murder earlier that year, the song showcased his enduring impact on the hip-hop scene. Kanye West's sophomore album Late Registration made its debut in 2005, solidifying his status as a hip-hop phenomenon after the groundbreaking success of his debut, College Dropout. Notably innovative in both production and content, the album claimed the number one spot on the Billboard 200 and earned eight Grammy nominations. Hits like Gold Digger, featuring Jamie Foxx, Heard Him Say, featuring Adam Levine, and Touch the Sky, featuring Lupe Fiasco, showcased West's mastery of the genre. G-Unit rapper Tony Yeo seized the moment in 2005 with his debut album Thoughts of a Predicate Felon, following a high-profile free Yeo campaign orchestrated by 50 Cent and Eminem to secure his release from federal prison. Released on the same day as Kanye West's late registration, the album secured the number two spot on the Billboard 200 chart, selling 215,000 copies. The lead single, So Seductive, featuring 50 Cent, contributed to the album's success, with 50 Cent also serving as its executive producer. Rapper, podcaster, and reality TV personality Joe Budden, born in Harlem, New York, but primarily based in Jersey City, New Jersey, gained prominence in the tri-state hip-hop circuit through mixtapes hosted by DJ Clue and DJ K Slay. After attracting Def Jam Records' attention, he released his self-titled debut in 2003. Following a parting of ways with the label, Button pursued an independent path, signing with Amalgam Digital in 2007 and establishing his own mood music imprint in 2011. On this day in 1999, Boot Camp Click Affiliates OGC dropped their second studio album, The Empire Shirks Back, via Duck Down slash Priority Records. Following their debut to Storm by three years, Empire reached number 170 on the Billboard 200 chart, propelled by the single Bounce to the Ounce and collaborations with fellow BCC members Buckshot, Smith & Wesson, and Helta Skelta. Rapper and singer Nelly reclaimed the number one spot on the US charts with his second studio album, Nellyville, on August 31, 2002. LL Cool J continued to ignite the music scene with his 11th album, The Definition, which debuted at number 4 on the Billboard 200. The album, buoyed by hits like Head Sprung and Hush, reached gold certification and featured production work from Timbaland, Teddy Riley, N.O. Joe, and Seven Aurelius, contributing to its energetic and danceable sound. 